Welcome to the second part of the Stratford-upon-Avon Canal. This is where the navigation begins to get pretty quirky as, basically, it was built on the cheap. Now don't get me wrong, quirky is good and this canal improves immeasurably the further south you travel. So hang in there for some weird and wonderful aqueducts, Lockie's cottages that had no amenities whatsoever, the quaintest of bridges that get narrower and narrower, an abundance of antiquated buildings and a look around the Bard's hometown, historic Stratford-upon-Avon. On towards Lozenford where there are good moorings and the canal-side pub serves an excellent pint of Timothy Taylor's. And then more locks. OK, quirky alert number one. An aqueduct that leads into a lock and the towpath is level with the bottom of the canal. I've never come across this before. The boat is on its way up, so I'll get a helping hand on this one. Now I realise at this point that my TV and Wi-Fi aerials weren't going to make it under the bridge. So, a quick shift into reverse and a shimmy along the gunnels to drop them down. And then I'm on my way again, passing the upcoming boat in the pound. The locks on this canal have single bottom gates rather than the usual two, which makes for much heavier work. A moored in the pound between locks 36 and 37, just before Preston Baggett. Enough locking done for one day, I think. A very nice old butty moored on the left. Then it's on to lush green countryside. And I do like these split bridges. They may be narrow and done on the cheap, but they really are quite charming. The ironwork was built in two sections with a gap in the middle to pass the towing rope through so that the horses didn't have to be unhitched. A short day's cruising and I reach my destination. I'm moored overnight in Wooten Warwell, at least I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, I popped into the village to see this church. There was a church built here in 720 AD. Um, the wooden church was replaced by this one in 1035 and built by Wagan the Thane. It's thought that the original wooden church may have been pillaged and burnt by Viking invaders. Wooden Wagan means the farm near a wood belonging to Wagan. The village shop has everything you can imagine for sale, from beach balls and fishing nets to Indian spices, and the staff are amazingly friendly. 
the Palladian-style hall was built in 1687 for Francis, the second Lord Carrington. It's now been converted into apartments. Yep, another one of those quirky aqueducts coming up. So I pass through Wooden Wayward Basin and continue over the road. Crashing of swans next. Narrowly avoided. He doesn't look too chuffed though. been an amazing three miles of Loch 3 cruising until I come to this one and then there's another three miles and no locks further ahead. Soon after the lock I moored for lunch and went to have a look at Edstone Aqueduct. He crosses a field, three railway tracks, one of which is now disused, a stream and a road. It's almost 500 feet long, or 146 metres, and it's five foot deep. When the canal had fallen into disuse in the mid 20th century, local children came here to learn to swim. A pipe used to hang under the aqueduct so that steam engines could stop and fill their boilers from the canal. Now I know it's not exactly the Pont Casilton, but it is still an exhilarating experience. Next stop, Wilmcote. Another split bridge and look at the damaged brickwork, especially on the right hand side where boats have bashed it. Is it me or are these bridges getting narrower? Lovely to see a bit of sunshine and may blossom on the hawthorn.
Oh, bugger. Actually, this bridge was even narrower because the brickwork had been rendered. There was barely an inch on either side. Now this is Mary Arden's house. Who, you may ask, is Mary Arden? Well, she was Shakespeare's mother before she was married. Only, it's not actually Mary Arden's house. It was discovered in 2000 that she actually lived in the house behind this one, which, sadly, I couldn't film because it was closed due to Covid. I'd moored in Wilmco overnight, ready to take on the flight of 11 locks in the morning. I needn't have worried though, I was helped down and up when I returned by volunteer lockies, which is always highly appreciated. After the flight of 11, there are a further five locks taking you down into Stratford. Just beyond the last lock, you're a stone's throw from the centre of town, and these are two week moorings. I needed to stay for about a week, so I spent about five days here and then moved to the nearby Bancroft Basin. Bancroft Basin is pretty huge, and that is Shakespeare Memorial Theatre ahead where the Royal Shakespeare Company are based. If theatre is your thing, then this is the place for you, because I did notice that, um, apart from this one, there are another ten theatres in this little town. There was a wide beam in the lock onto the River Avon waiting to come up, and I reversed reverie into the mooring pontoon, careful not to nudge the luxury restaurant boat moored opposite. The river cruise boat exits the lock. His scepter shows the force of temple power, the attribute to awe and majesty Wherein doth sit the dread and fear of kings? Well, you get a different class of buskers here, I can tell you. I wonder what he would have made of it. This is Shakespeare's birthplace, by the way. And where he went to school, the last building, the one next to the church. Stratford is full of historic timber-framed buildings and I always feel it's good to look up rather than looking around as you wander through streets and places like this. So much to see, so much detail on these old buildings. The following morning, mist rose from the river and geese honked opposite the theatre. There are a huge number of statues in Stratford, mostly with Shakespearean references.
Markets are held in the town centre every Friday and Saturday. Is this nothing? Why then, the world and all that's in it is nothing. The covering sky is nothing. Bohemia, nothing. My wife is nothing. Nor nothing have these nothings. If this be nothing, As usual, thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to uh, hit the like button, that would really help my channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you see when I upload new videos. Also, please share on your social media, uh, that will help my channel an awful lot too. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.